How's it going guys and welcome back to another JHR DIY project. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a glass pendant out of nothing but some glass that I got at Hobby Lobby and a little tiny marble. It's a half marble. And to make this magic work we have something right here called a microwave kiln. Now this has a ring of a certain type of dust. I can't think of the name. I think it's like a silica carb or something. And this is going to heat up to about 1,600 degrees inside of the microwave. You can use, probably recommended would be a 1,000 watt one, but you can also use, uh, I think somebody said uh, like an 8 to 900 watt as well. This one over here, I believe, is a 1,000 something watt. So it should be good for what we're going to be doing today. The other things you're going to need is a small kit. Here is a glass cutter. We have a thing of nippers. And then these are what break the glass with pressure. So let's move these to the side real quick. So this is a plain piece of black glass. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it. So this is what the glass looks like. Just a standard piece. has a little bit of uh, texture to it. As you can see. And then this is the marble that we're going to be using. Has a pretty little streak right there inside and part of it see-through. So basically what we need to do is we need to shape this piece of glass into uh, kind of a smaller shape. So this is a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is actually cut it down the center. Or actually a little bit off. There we go. And then I'll probably just break this one like this. Pretty easy. And then the other thing that we're going to do is clean up the edges a little bit to kind of refine it for when it melts. So what happens is this pools upward. And basically what happens is if the edges are already kind of rounded out, it makes it easier and creates a better shape. So I usually take about this much of it in my little nippers right here and then I just go ahead and kind of chop them off. Also if you notice my microphone's a little different today I'm using the in-phone microphone because I'm out in my garage. So let's go ahead and continue nipping these off. I still feel like this is a little bit too long but the cool thing about these nippers is you can actually take off large pieces as well. Now let's just go ahead and uh, continue rounding this off. You can do it in smaller sections too. There we go. Getting to a circle shape. And you know, working with glass is dangerous, so I make sure you use all of the proper safety equipment. but it's actually really easy to work with as well. So here we go. We have a more of a semblance of a circle now. And if we just grab the little tiny thing right here, we place it down in the center. And then this is gonna go inside the microwave kiln. But before we do that, let me pull out of my drawer real quick. We're gonna need some kiln paper. And this is just a ceramic type paper that won't catch on fire in the microwave. So we just remove this, lay that down right there, and then I'm just going to wipe my glass off real quick to make sure that it's not all smudged up. It's better to have your glass clean before you put it inside of there. So we're just going to set down that piece, and then we're going to grab the marble and then place that down as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut and show you guys me putting it in the microwave. And then at the end, we're going to see what kind of really awesome thing came out of here. So stay tuned. All right, let's make sure that your marble is on there. Be careful and uh, make sure that you, once you put the lid on, you just tilt it open just a little bit, pick it up. So you make sure that it didn't slide around. So let's go ahead and pick this up and set it in the microwave. One thing is you cannot use this microwave if you've already used it for glass because it does give off fumes and it would uh, not be good for your food. So just make sure you have an extra microwave that you're good with, you know, kind of making it only for glass. We're going to take the top of this. We're just going to set it on top. 
Make sure it's center, that's still center. And we're gonna close the microwave up. And then we're gonna put a timer on for about 10 minutes or check it halfway through. And I will see you then. All right, so it's been about 12 minutes and it's just starting to turn molten. It actually might already be done. But as you can see in there, it is 100% glowing. I'm kind of looking at the edges a little bit. You don't want to have it off too much because the glass can crack. But I'm going to let it go for the last two minutes just because I want to make sure those edges are uh, rounded off. All right, and now it's been about 40 minutes. And we're going to go ahead and take the top of the microwave kiln off. Move that to the side. And then let's just go ahead and touch it real quick. Yeah, it's still pretty hot, so I definitely wouldn't, you know, let a cold breeze hit it or anything. Honestly, it should stay in here longer. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like up close. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Pardon the dog in the background. Yeah, it melted in there pretty good. It actually uh, kind of even seems like it expanded quite a bit inside of the black. It has some underlying rough edges that can be sanded out because its shape is a little tiny bit off in my opinion, but it's actually not too bad. You could even file it to where you can make it more of like a square shape if you wanted to, but it'd be really easy to just wet some sandpaper and file this off into a perfect circle. But yeah, what do you guys think? This is really easy to just grab a bale and put it on there, and you can turn this into a necklace. You could embed it into a like a wooden jewelry box or, you know, something like that too. Or it could just be a really good rubbing stone. But yeah. And today I have some Hatsune Miku gotchas. I don't have just one, of course. I have two because I want to be able to see whether or not we can get two different ones. And I actually got these from the 99 cent store and it's surprising when I was a kid, they never had cool anime stuff or, you know, stuff like this. It was always like kind of cheap, like cowboy plastic guns and samurai swords and stuff like that that were made out of flimsy plastic. But now they seem to be bringing in more stuff, but at a little bit of a higher price, which I don't particularly mind. But let's take a good look at the packaging. So right on the front we have a cute little chibi miku with a happy face going on. It says 6 to collect. Some stuff at the bottom. It says Hatsune Miku. Backpack hangers. And then on the back right here it shows the ones that you're able to get. We have a heart Miku, a happy Miku, a kind of XD Miku, a angry Miku, a dizzy Miku, and a kind of like the dot three dot face, or kind of like suspicious looking Miku. But without further ado, let's go ahead and open this guy up and see which one we got on the first one. It has a little pull tab right there opens pretty easily. We can peek inside. This is how the packaging looks. It actually has a little uh, paper thing so people can't shine lights through here, I believe, and see which one it is. Or actually, they can't feel it to feel what it is because it has a reflective coating as well so that you can't see through it, I believe. Let's pull it out. Which one do we get? Oh, this one is actually the one that I wanted to get. It is the Heart Miku, and that is really cute. Back in the day, I was a pretty big uh, cosplayer, and I had a lot of friends who cosplayed from uh, Vocaloid. I actually cosplayed as Kaito, and those are pretty good days back when I was like 16. And I cosplayed and did uh, anime conventions almost all the way until I was uh, in my uh, early 20s. I just haven't gone back for a while due to, uh, is that broken? Or is that clip in there? Oh, it clips. Okay. Based on, uh, I haven't gone pretty much based on money and uh, time. 
But let's take a closer look at the figure right here. She comes with a really cute looking face. Has heart on her eyes. The pigtails are slightly flexible. I'm not sure if they would come off or not. And then this one is as well, but it kind of wraps around her foot. Let's see if we can zoom in on the outfit a little bit though. Or focus in. Looks really cute. Has a tiny bit of, you know, paint error right there by the hands. But honestly, when it's like this far away, you would never normally be able to see it. You know, zooming in on 4K uh, with a camera is a lot easier to see the mistakes on uh, certain things. But I think this thing's made pretty well. Let's focus in on the back. Has a bunch of little intricate details on there, so they captured pretty much everything. And uh, yeah, I think this is really cute. I might uh, put it on my keychain because I haven't put on a new anime keychain in a long time. But I like this one a lot. Let's see what the other one is. Go ahead and pull the tab. And now we're going to pull it out. And, all right. So we weren't stuck with having the same one. Luckily, we have the Smiling Peace Miku, which is also really cute. And then they have some tape right here that you're supposed to peel off to get rid of this little thingy. But I'm not going to worry about that because I think if I hold it right here, I can still show you guys everything about it. So same thing with the pigtails on this one. They're a little bit flexible, but I think that you'd have to pull on them real hard to get them to fall off. Same thing with the paint on the hand. I just think it's harder for them to get the paint on there properly because it's so small. She has a cute uh, facial expression. And then the other one, she has her hand actually behind her back right there. And then she also has her classic uh, little hair things and her headphone and mic that wraps around to come to the front, which it actually does wrap around if you've noticed. It actually comes from the back and has a little separation right over here and everything. But yeah, these are actually really cute, and let's go ahead and compare both of them together. They're pretty much the same size, and uh, I guess maybe they just have, um, well, you know what's interesting is her belt ends right there, but her belt right here moves all the way across to where her tie is. That's interesting. I'm sure they have different castings for these. What do you guys think? Pretty cute, something that you'd pick up and hang on your backpack or maybe your uh, keychain. Let me know in the comments below. And today I am with my fiance and as you know, I reviewed my 90s toys before, but now we're kind of diving into her 90s toys. Now this is probably over a hundred different Pokemon toys right here. So uh, yeah, go ahead and say hi, Tori. Hi, I hope you guys like it. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and dig into these and see all the different ones we have. So if you're interested, go ahead and stay tuned. All right, so first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about the tin that these are in? Yeah, so um, when I was really young, I was a huge Pokemon fan, and I had way too many figures than what could fit in my bedroom. So at some point, I started using the, uh, the tin cases that came in the trading card sets to store them. I'm pretty sure this one was one of the trading card kits that came out for Pokemon Advanced, which was my favorite Pokemon series. I really loved the Hoenn region. There we go. If you notice, the tin is actually in really good condition too, so let's go ahead and open this up. And we have a significant amount of uh, Pokemon toys in here, so let's go ahead and start going through these individually, and she'll help me out on the names in case I can't remember. So, this is the first one that I picked up, and I believe this one is Star You. That's Star Me. Oh, okay, never mind. It's uh, Star Me. Alright, so there's Star Me. I can't seem to set it up, it just wants to fall over. Alright, and then we have Growlithe. Yeah. Growlithe. Yeah. Doko. 
then we have Blastoise right here. Kind of has like a derpy face. I don't know if you can see the teeth. He's kind of kind of derpy. Oh man, I can't remember the name of this Pokemon. <laughs> this is uh, obviously Pikachu, the fatter version. Very cute. We have, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is Kadabra. That's correct. There we go. And then over here we have Tor... T Tauros? Yes. Tauros, there we go. And it's kind of hard for me to, it's like picking a part of my brain I haven't picked in a long time. Uh, Hitmonlee? Mm-hmm. I really highly doubt he's going to stand up. Nope. Yeah, no. I think there's some in here. Oh, here we go. This one's actually a pencil topper. I think these all might be pencil toppers. It, it's mixed. Some of them are and some of them aren't. Okay, so this is Tangela. Uh, we used these as Monopoly pieces before. Oh, that's we really cute. We had Pokemon cute. Monopoly set. Polygon? Or Poly... Polygon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Polygon. Right? I wasn't sure if I had it right. We have... Electra... No, that's Electrike. Mm-mm. No, Elekid. Elekid, yeah. Electrike is a newer Pokemon. It's that little dog thing, right? Yeah, but that's, that is Hoenn region, so I might have one of those in there. Because that one's We have uh, Charmander. That's kind of terrifying his face. I don't know. He's seen some better days. Yeah, he has. Being stored in the garage only once. All right, and we have Metapod. I don't know why I I, I never noticed, but this kind of looks like a beak. I wonder if this is like actually a mouth. You think? No. No. Metapod doesn't have a mouth. Yeah. How do they eat? They don't. They don't. Okay. They don't eat. <laughs> they don't eat. And here we have a. Um, I can't remember the name of this guy. Slowbro? Slowbro or sl it's not Slowpoke, I think. No, no that's no, Slowbro. No Slowbro. Slowbro, yeah, the evolved form. And his collar's a little off, honestly. And uh, so is the inside of his mouth. It's kind of more like a brown rather than a pink. And he's got kind of derpy eyes. All right. Let's pull another one out. Oh, this guy looks older. This is uh, Bulbasaur. Got some printing on the back. Looks like it's in Japanese, actually. Pretty cool. Uh, some of these might be imported. Mom liked to order things online for me when I was a kid, so some of oh. them probably aren't local. Oh, nice. So we have some Japanese Pokemon toys in here. I had no idea. Oh, yeah, look at that. Let's see if we can focus in on that. How cool is that? So this is definitely imported. And it's another Pikachu. So we have this Pikachu right here, and then we also have this other Pikachu right here. Let's go ahead and set them down. And now we have Psyduck. For some reason he has green nostrils, I don't know why. That was probably me with a marker. Okay, so it was probably her with a marker. Alright, and now we have Parasect, I believe? That's correct. Yeah, Parasect. Alright, and now we have a Ninetales. Only got part of a face on here, though. The one side, it's kind of like a flat style. Kind of reminds me of a seashell. And then right here we have Moltres. Legendary Pokemon. Legendarily derpy. It looks like one of those chickens that you squeeze and they scream. <laughs> there we go. My fiance is trying to maintain her composure, but she was about to lose it on that one. Then we have uh, Bell Sprout. Weeping what? Bell. Weeping Bell. What a beautiful, beautiful little. <laughs> okay, let's set them down. Let's just set them down. Some of these are just really badly painted. All right, and now we have one that's actually the right color. Like, let, let's... King. That's Slow King. It's a Slow King, okay. But can we compare this guy to just whatever we got going on right here? I don't know what they were thinking. 
unless the paint just kind of darkened over time. Let's put this guy back. And now we have a kind of cracked out looking Mr. Mime. There we go. Uh, one of my favorites, we have uh, Togepi. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, Togepi's hands though. It's kind of weird. And we have another mole trace over here. It still this... kind of looks like a chicken. Yeah, it does look like a chicken a little bit. And of course, we're definitely going to have a lot of Pikachus, and this Pikachu looks like uh, you'd bump into him at like a 7-Eleven at like 2 in the morning, and he'd be asking you for some pocket change. I don't know what's going on there. There we go. And then we have a uh, Kadabra? No. no, this is Hypno. What? Hypno. There we go. Kind of a little fuzzy on all the psychic Pokemon. And then we have a Sandshrew. I always really remember the Sandshrew from Pokemon Snap. And we have another... <laughs> Mr. Mime. And I feel like his hands were supposed to go into something because there's little pegs. But I also feel like his eyes melted downwards and he's like crying his eyeballs out. I don't know what's going on with that. But that Mr. Mime and this Mr. Mime. I don't know what's going on. Let's zoom in on these guys' face real close like. See how close we can get. That's like stuff of nightmares. But then you meet his twin brother. God, I'm just going to put these down. I'm going to lose it. There we go. And let's go ahead and pull out another one. We have a Venusaur. You know, these all kind of look hand-painted, so maybe that's why they're off a little bit. Some of these, you can tell they were more machine-based, but some of these just look hand-painted. Oh, so we have uh, Taurus again. Or maybe not Taurus. Is this Taurus? I believe so. Yeah, I think he's just painted different. Okay. There we go. And then I can't remember the name of this guy. What's his name? Pincer? Yeah, Pincer, because he has pincers on his head. And we have Hootoot. And we have a regular slow bro. Poke. Slow poke. And again, what is with the color variations of these guys? He's kind of like the middle ground between the other two. I feel like this one's the most accurate. Actually, no. This guy's the most accurate. Hand me the, uh... Which one? The, the, the dark pink. The dark pink one? Yeah, he's kind of the no, middle hold ground. Up, hold up. And now grab the other one. Okay, so it's like a variation. It's like going down the scale of pinks. There we go. Together, and... they make the right shade of color. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and put these guys to the side. I believe I see an Arbok. He looks exceptionally happy. His face reminds me of Doug from Up. I vividly remember playing with that one for way too long. Yeah? Yeah. There we go. Let's get a little bit legendary in here. We have Zapdos. And then right here we have a Beedrill, and his eyes are pretty terrifying looking, I'm not going to lie. My fiance is going to lose unless I put this guy down, so let's go ahead and set him down. <laughs> a lot of these are in the UK over there. Alright, let's just let her calm down real quick. Alright, and now we have one of my favorites, which is Charizard. I feel like his eyes are connected to the back of his neck a little bit though. It looks really nice from the front though. But you know as a kid these would be pretty much great. And, you yeah, know, I, I didn't see anything wrong with them as a kid. It's just looking at them now. Yeah, you can see the this one actually is pretty good. This is uh this isn't Cubone, this is the evolved form Marowak. Mm. 
I believe this is Hitmonchan. No, uh, Machop. Machop. I don't know what's going on with the smile, though. Kind of, he look a little chunk. I'm more concerned about the fact that he looks like his ribs are showing, even though he's fat. Yeah. All right. And now we have... This is an imported one as well. It is, um... Wow, I can't remember. Oddish. Oddish, yeah. Just like you. <laughs> All right, and now we have another legendary, which is... Groudon. Groudon. We can't forget uh, everyone's favorite, Snorlax. I used to make my dad use that every time we played Monopoly. Yeah? You yeah. can tell it's been a... That one's probably across. one of the oldest ones we have. Yeah? There we go, and then now we have another Arbok. This one's kind of shiny. We have a Butterfree. Bye bye, Butterfree. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I know. And now we have. Oh, this one's real dirty. Look at that. This is, um... Meryl. Meryl, and yeah. And Meryl has seen much better days. Yeah, it has. We have so many Pikachus, and we have another Pikachu right here. This looks like a miniature version of that one I hang on the Christmas tree. Yeah. Is it imported? Yeah, it looks like an imported one. You have a lot, almost all of these look like they're imported. Mom really likes eBay. All right. And now we have, uh... Haunter. Let's kind of move these around a little bit. Now, for some reason, we have a colorless um, version of what you call it. Can't think of the name. Porygon. Porygon. Yeah. Porygon. Earlier we said Polygon. It was Porygon this whole time. I knew I knew that was Porygon. wrong. Porygon. And now we have a Goldeen. <sighs> really drawing here. But this Goldeen just it looking gold dead. <laughs> Alright, let's stop. And right here we have uh Magnet Mag Magneton? Yes. Yeah, there we go. I don't know the name of this one. Ladybug. Ladybug. We have a, um, that's a fossil Pokemon, I know that. Kabutops? Mm-hmm. Here we go. We have a Diglett. Very cute. Looks like I have a Kangaskhan. We have another, um... This one's Alakazam. Alakazam. So this other, the other one wasn't Alakazam, was it? He, the other one was a Kadabra. This one has two spoons. Oh, okay. We have a uh, Dragonite or Dragonair. Dragonite was right. Dragonite. And then we have a. Uh, I'm not sure. It's a Chansey holding an egg. Yeah, I'm not gonna take a chance on that one. But now we have um. I know that evolves into Beedrill. Kakuna. Kakuna. There we go. And then this one should be Starmie, right? No, no, that one's Staryu, the other one's Starmie. Starmie. I was right the first time. No, no. No, I was, okay, I was wrong both times. And now we have a, um, I, I know this one, don't, don't, don't tell me. Uh, it's Haunter, and then you have, um, Ghastly, and then, um, it's a uh, Gengar. Yeah. 
Let's go ahead and pull out another one. And now we have a right on. Right on man. And a tangled dug trio. No, not dog trio. Um, what is this one? Do duo. Do duo. Because duo means two. <laughs> okay. We have a sand slash. Sand slash, because he has the little tiny slashers right there. Another pincer. Now this one's seen better days. The other one, though, where is he at? This one looks a lot better than this one does. Though they're both a little messed up. This guy, I like the guy's pincer on there a lot more. <laughs> so we have a, this is the evolved form, right? Mm -hmm. um, Growlithe? No. Yeah, no, Groudon. No. I don't know. Arcanine. Arcanine. And he is not Arcafine. I'm gonna set that down. You need to stop. I'll never stop with the buttons. Oh, this is a really cute mouth. Meowth. I don't know why he has, like, two little thingies, though. Like, did he kill another Meowth and steal it? Oh my god. We have a... It's not a Zubat, it's a... Robat. No. No, it's the other one. Is it like a... Uh, Golbat. Golbat. And now we have a... Uh, executor? Mm-hmm. I really liked those when growing up. I don't know why. Now we have... A Weedle. We have a... Flareon? Mm-mm. No, a Vulpix. There you go. There we go. The evolved form of Psyduck, but I can't remember the name. Golduck. Golduck. Well, while I'm at it, I see two of these, so we might as well pull them out. Okay, <coughs> one thing is not the same. One got an eyebrow job. Yeah, one of them went to the uh, went to the mall and said, "I need a threading done." Let's go and put this down. All right, looks like we have another fossil Pokemon. Can't remember the name of this guy though. I believe that one's Amastar. Amastar. Okay. And the little one's Amanite, I think. It's been a while. Looks like we have another one of these guys. Kangaskhan. Don't know what's going on with their baby, though. And this one is Parasect? Parasect's the evolved form. Para... Parasite? Paris. Paris, okay. And then we have a uh, Lickitung. That's correct. A little darker pink than I would think that it would need to be. He got his summer tan on time. Now, this is Parasect. Yes. <clears throat> there we go. And we have another one of these guys. It's, I don't know why my brain can't... Togepi. There we go. We have... This is... Coughing, I believe, because yeah, the other one wheezing would have more heads. Here's a. Um, I can do it. So it's the evolved form. Of, it's Pidgeotto. No. No. Pidgeot. Pidgeot is the final form. Okay. And that is Violbloom. And it looks like Vio one of Violbloom's eyes melted out. Plume. Violplume. Violplume. It's more like a vile, vile doom. Creepy eyes. Alright. Then we have, um... Oh, man. 
I wish I could just hear them saying their name in my head, but I can't. Gloom. Okay. <laughs> it's Gloom. And then we have Farfetched, like a lot of the puns that I've made in this video. Wiggly Tough. Wiggly Tough. And Hypno again, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't remember the name of these guys. Because there's two different ones. The this should be Nidorino, which is the middle form. Okay, Nidorino. Another one of these. That one should be another Kadabra. Kadabra. And then we have this Pikachu who's looking a little off. He's really Pikachuing at you. We have a. Uh, Vaporeon. Vaporeon. He's one of the Eevee Aerodactyl. Oh, good job. Look at me. Moving up in the ranks. We have, uh... It's, uh, I can't remember. Tentacruel. Tentacruel. Oh, finally. We got some starters. We have, a uh, Squirtle. Squirtle. Squirt, squirt, squirtle. This is another, uh, what is that? Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn. Hoot hoot. It's so cute. It is cute. One, another one of my favorites. Gyarados. You wake up in the middle of the night and you just see this staring at you. Too small to be scared. <laughs> and we have a uh... Alright. We have a uh, Minky. Is this a Rapidash? That's correct. We have Muck. I think that one's actually Grimer. Grimer. Here's a green golem. Maybe he's shiny. No, I think this is in the set of ones that were painted bad. Ah, uh, okay. All the browns seem to be mixed with green for some reason. You don't need to tell him that. He wants to be special. Electra... no. Mm. Dangerous Pokeball. It's a dangerous Pokeball. Do you remember the name of it? I know the starter's Voltorb, but I can't remember its evolved form for some reason. Let us know in the comments below. Goldine? No. No, um, Sea King. Yeah. Yeah. Sea King. Sea King, Jolteon, Dragonite, Ghastly. Gotta catch him, catch him, got something. Pokemon. Another, uh, fossil. Kabutops. Mm-hmm. There's a newer one. Cacnea. Cacnea, yeah. We have, uh, Hitmon. Lee again. Hitmon terrifying. And then, man, you've, this is probably the m most you've had is this guy. A but really, I, really, really poor Alakazam. You can even see where the mold injection was because they didn't clean up the lines. It's probably a recasting of something that was already made. He's got a sparkle. It's cute. And then another psychic one we had in hand before is a drowsy. Mm hmm. Drowsy. We have another cool duck. Mm hmm. There we go. Then we have 
uh, execute. Look at the face of the one on top. <laughs> uh, Chansey? No, Clefairy. Clefairy. Tangela? Mm-hmm. Venusaur, no, 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 um, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Ivysaur. I if I have to count, like, numbers in my head. Another pincer. You had a lot of these, too. Yeah. So many pincers. Then we have, uh, Angry Mankey. I mm -hmm. believe it has a little... No? I think that one's Primeape. Primeape, yeah. I think that's the evolved one. Oh, yeah, it's Primeape. And then we have, uh, another poorly injected mold of, um... I can't remember the name. Cedra. Cedra. And then the last one. Derpy. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, Cla fairy? Cla Chancy. Chancy. I'm just gonna feel around in here. And that was it. We completely went through all of these different little Pokemon toys. And now the entire inside is empty. Check it out. That's pretty cool. I really enjoyed going through these with my fiance and uh, got some laughs out of some of the poorly made ones. But uh, what do you guys think? Please share this with your friends if you found it enjoyable. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But liking the video means a lot because it really shows YouTube that you guys enjoyed it and it pushes it out there to help the channel. Mm -hmm. And as always. And today I'm looking at a Samsung USB microphone that is for iOS and this has actually um, been sent to me from Samson to be able to review for you guys. This is going to be completely unbiased, though, and uh, I'm already excited, though, because, as you can see, it has a really cool design. It almost reminds me of, like, a retro-looking microphone, but uh, it's interesting because it's going to be able to hook up to either an iPhone or an iPad. So let's go ahead and check this out and turn it around to the side and see some of the features that it has. Let's go ahead and focus in. It says, broadcast quietly. USB iOS microphone for streaming and recording directly to your computer, iPhone, or iPad. It says, simply start. Simply connect via USB, no drivers required, and start recording at 24-bit, 96 kilohertz high resolution audio. It says it has a multi-pattern mic a dual 16 millimeter condenser mic capsule with three selectable pickup patterns. It says pro it provides flexibility for any recording application. And then it says preferred placement, position the microphone at a nearly at nearly any angle and fold back legs for optimal placement. And then it says iOS compatible Turn your iPhone or iPad into a powerful production studio by connecting the satellite microphone and the included lightning cable. You know, we turn it around to the back. We get a little bit more information right up here. And it shows it connecting to an iPad, which I have right next to me. It says, USB iOS broadcast microphone. Samson Satellite is a broadcast quality USB iOS mic designed for capturing high definition audio on your computer, iPhone, or iPad. And I actually, this just gives the same information that was on the side. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it's all about. It has a little uh, pull tab here at the top. I kind of ended up just ripping it off. And here we go. Let's open right here. And then on this side. And then we're greeted with a box that slides out. And another simple pull tab. It is packaged very well, which is good. And then just remove this right here. And it's starting to slide out. 
Ooh, that looks really nice. Let's go ahead and pull it out of here. Looks as though it's already put together. Let's go ahead and slide it out of here. And focus in on it. So this is the mic right here. It looks really nice, nice reflectivity, and then it has this really beautiful kind of silver grill on here. And we'll check out the buttons in a minute, but let's go ahead and remove the rest of the contents in the box. Comes with an instruction manual. We'll move that to the side. Right here, it looks like we have a micro USB to a lightning cable. That's very interesting. And then right here we have a micro USB to regular USB, so you can use it on your computer as well, which is really convenient. But let's go ahead and open this up right here. This mic would be really good for ASMR purposes if you have like a iPhone and you'd like to use that as your camera. You could actually plug this guy in and do some really nice uh, high quality ASMR sounds. So that's pretty cool. So let's take a closer look at the mic now. I'm going to turn it to its side. It has a really nice grill. And it has a good weight to it too. This is actually made out of metal. So it has a really good weight. Looks as though it has a multiple different uh, kind of capturing points. So this one is like an 8, so it captures from front and back. And then right there it looks like it has that kind of front area. And maybe that's like an in-between. It has a button right here to mute, and uh, maybe it's touch, but that's the mute button right there. And then it also has a gain as well. You can turn it up and down. And then it says uh, to monitor your mic for off and on. So I assume that there's a headphone jack. There is. That's very helpful for uh, ASMR purposes, so you can actually hear yourself talking. Bottom has a nice mount for uh, putting it on like a microphone arm, so that's very convenient. But then it also has these really neat fold-out legs. Let's go ahead and yank on that. Opens up just like that. Kind of like a uh, pocket knife. It even has the little grooves, kind of looks like it, doesn't it? That's so cool. And then let's open the last one. And then we'll move it back a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into the iPad, and then I'm also going to do a PC audio test as well. So that goes in on the back, and then we're gonna go ahead and focus in on the iPad, and we're just going to go ahead and stick this lightning bolt cable on the side. There we go. Now let's open voice memos. And sometimes, for some reason, it likes to show my street address, so I'll probably just black that out. And let's go ahead and turn this around. And we'll set it to the bottom setting. And click record. As you can see, the light actually turned green right here if I focus in on that. This is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. Let's switch to the middle setting. This is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. Again, this is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. All right, now let's go ahead and pause that or click done. And now we can click uh, play. Let me unplug this first since it has a output through the microphone. As you can see, the light actually turned green right here if I focus in on that. This is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. I'll switch to the middle setting. This is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. Again. This is an audio test of the Samsung microphone. All right, now let's go ahead and pause that or click down. And as you can see, it actually sounds really good. It probably doesn't sound as good as it would be, um, if you are actually here in person, but in order to fix that, we're going to go ahead and roll the audio I recorded with my PC. So here we go. 
This is an audio test using the bottom setting on the Samsung microphone. Let's switch to two. This is an audio test using the middle setting on the Samsung microphone. This is the third setting on the Samsung microphone. All right, so that was the audio on the PC, and I honestly think that that was pretty good. This microphone is very nice looking as well. I like the kind of retro capsule looking thing that it's got going on. And uh, yeah, it even has the ability to uh, hear yourself, which I always like. So yeah, all these different options, mute button, gain, it is all around a pretty nice microphone, and I'm really happy with it. So uh, thank you again, Samsung, and I'll put this in the link in the description below. And as always, today I'm going to be doing what I said in my previous mold video, and I'm going to be going over all of these ones that my fiancé's mom has previously already slipcast. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start looking at these one by one. So I'm doing manual focus on this so I can try to get this as best as I can. So sorry if I accidentally blur them a bit at some point. So this right here looks like a little lamb. It was probably part of a nativity scene, honestly. I'm gonna put that one down. And then right here, it looks like we have uh, kind of like some kind of bear. It needs a lot of care and love, this one. Looks as though it, uh, Maybe it actually sits on its side, though I don't feel like it does. I feel like this one kind of uh, didn't come out very well, but that's all right. Now we have another bear, and all of this stuff on the side, it actually can be cleaned up, um, but I don't do the cleaning my fiance's mom actually does. But I might actually have her kind of show me what I need to do in order to do that. This is a cute little bear. Right here, we have a deer or a doe. You can see this is where everything was poured in. A nose needs to be cleaned up in the ears as well. Here's that one I've been talking about for a while that I really like. I think it'd be really nice to fire this up. There's a little bit of a mistake right there. But uh, you have the mold, so you can create a bunch of these guys. We can't forget that we also have some boxes as well. This one right here is uh, pretty nice. It's kind of like a seashell box. Looks as though it might have got warped just a little bit. That's all right, though. Like I said, everything can be reported again. And uh, we're not low on slipping, you know that. All right, let's go ahead and pick this guy up. Ooh, I like this. I didn't see this one before. So this is a mouse on top of a little tiny clock. I love clocks. They're just so, especially the old style ones, they're so cool. All right. And ooh, this guy back here, I like this guy. Let's pull him out. Oh man, I like this one. This is actually uh, an incense holder. How cool is that? That is definitely something that I uh, would love to have fired. And you can pretty much mass produce these things too. Man, that's so cool. All right, let's go ahead and put that guy back. I'm gonna have to do it gently because I don't wanna break these guys. They're very brittle, so. Here's an example right here of a mistake that you can make. If you put the lid on here while it's still uh, wet, it actually can adhere together, so this box is kinda sealed. It might be able to, with a little bit of running something through the edge, be able to actually separate it again. There we go. But let's look at a really nice box over here that we have. I'm gonna go ahead and move it around. Look at this one. That heart design came out so good. Look at that. And you can uh, remove it. Looks 
like it has a little split in it, but that actually can be fixed with adding some clay to it. But look how nice that looks. Really enjoy that box. Let's move this over here. And uh, one that we made together the other day, if I go ahead and grab it, is that semi-truck. It actually dried very well. I don't know if you can tell, the color is much lighter now. And if we fired it, we could actually put like a little peg in there that allowed it to move back and forth. How cool is that? Let's go ahead and put that down. And of course, we have some more detailed ones too. This is also part of a nativity scene, I believe. But look at the detail in this guy's uh, fur. It's insane. All that detail. Looks like we have some flat dogs I showed you guys briefly before. It's very cute. And then right here, it looks like we have some kind of uh, bull. There's a huge stack of these guys too, if you can see back there. So this is just one of those. Sometimes the mold has multiple different tiny little pockets that have the same design, so you can pour them and make them in more large kind of bulk. If we look up here, we have a really nice uh, sunflower kind of dish. If you fired this, you could glaze it. And maybe you could even do something like um, put your spoons on it or something. I think that would be pretty cool. Focus back in on it. What do you guys think? Let's go ahead and put this back. And let's go ahead and grab this guy. This guy right here is an owl. Let's see if I can get the right focus on here. There we go. I'm not used to using a manual focus, forgive me. Pretty cool. The bottom still needs to be uh, cleaned off. And then St. Patrick's Day, we have a little uh, guy right here. Leprechaun. Don't know why I couldn't think of it. Kind of looks ominous when you look at it like this. He's just like, how you doing? <laughs> Pretty nice little thing. That'd be really cool for uh, painting, maybe even for kids. And then we have, of course, we have uh, more designed kind of things like this. Move it in a little bit closer. There we go. Man, I really like this kind of stuff. I'd love to just like, I don't know, pour like a, I don't know, like a cocktail in there or something. I think that'd be kind of cool. Drink it out of a fired, kind of old-style cup. Let's see about moving this guy out of the way. Looks like we have some kind of stroller. I guess you could put a baby in there or something. Back, you can tell, is the uh, more damaged part. But like I said, sometimes the slip just pulls the dirt off the mold, and the next time you pour it, it'll be uh, a lot better in uh, its quality. You could uh, do something funny and put maybe like one of the little mice or, I don't know, dogs in there or something. You could grab like uh, this guy and be like, this is my baby. <laughs> All right, there we go. I'm going to set that back down. If I reach towards the top right here, we can look at some of the ones that I really like. And you probably already know what I'm talking about. It is these chess pieces, and oh man, oh man, let's focus in on these guys a little bit farther away. Right there. Oh man, look at this guy. That would be so cool if we could just find the rest of these guys. And I have that uh, scroll, so I'd love to make my own kind of um, little chess board. Man, that would be so nice. And then up here, there we go. We have another chess piece. I believe that's a rook. There you go. And then we have two of these guys, but I'm just going to show you guys one of them. There we go. 
pretty cool. Man, I really want to make a chessboard. I know I keep saying it, but man, do I want to make a chessboard. And we have a polar bear. It's pretty cute. Has a little bit of a little bit of a hairline crack. It's all repairable though. If you wet it down a little bit, you can seal the crack. And this is kind of cute, but I think it might be missing something. Looks like a nice basket and all, but uh, it has a hand on it. <laughs> Or at least part of an arm. So I'm thinking this goes with something much larger. So we gotta find the other piece to that. I gotta hand it to you though. These molds are pretty cool. Are these slip casts? I can't even make the pun. Man. Alright, here we go. <laughs> then we have this uh, cute cat. Let's actually zoom in or focus in a little bit more for these smaller guys. Yeah, look at that. How cute is that? Alright, put that back up there. We got some bigger ones, so let's go ahead and focus out a little bit. I'm going to bring this guy in. This is something I really want to fire. Look at that. It has a teacup. Clean up the edges, maybe throw it in the microwave kiln and see if I can actually get to a harder consistency. And then you can just uh, have yourself a tiny little cup of tea. I love that. Big fan of Victorian stuff. All right. And these guys are really cute. Look at this guy. Looks as though his tail is kind of missing, but it's a cute little cat. You guys know I love cats. So right over here, while wow, these guys are really small, look at this guy. Tiny little fat cat. That's so cute. Love it. Then I don't know if I've shown this guy yet. But he's kind of loafing. Very cute. And then, I like this one. This is one of my favorites. Because of the fur texture on there. The details in the face. What do you guys think about that one? There we go. And we have some ones farther in the back, but I don't know if I want to really risk grabbing ones that are too far back without first moving the ones, or moving the ones that are in front. I don't want to break any of them. A very nice little bird. And I think that comes in a set, actually. Oh, that's exactly why. I didn't break it, though, luckily. This guy looks really cool. Let's see if we can get him out of here. Look at this. Now this is something that I would like definitely see like my grandmother buying or maybe even I'd pick it up. It could be, you know, any color you want to if you wanted to paint it. The details in the flowers are still there too. And I really like this one. Let's put this back towards the back. I think I see an egg. I'm not sure, but I could swear that I see an egg back here. Let's see if I can pick it up. Probably not going to put it back, though. Yeah, this is just an egg. I think it might have laid on its side a little bit because we got some flat spots. It's a little thick, too. That's still cool. Nice little egg. And let's see if we have some bigger stuff, and then I'm going to finish off the video. Ooh, this one right here. This is going to be the last one. It's going to be hard to get in here, but... Look at this seashell. This is one I'm really excited to uh, mess with. We actually put holes at the bottom because we can totally turn this seashell into a planter. How cool is that? I would love to uh, plant, like, some herbs or something in this. Very nice. But yeah, what do you guys think? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed all these really nice uh, slip cast little tiny uh, things right here. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and checking out my Patreon. And as always, 
And inside this Full Metal Alchemist 10, which is almost starting to be retro in itself, are Pokemon cards that my fiance collected for many years of her childhood. And today we're actually going to be going through these individually, and I have her with me right now. Hello. And we're going to be kind of uh, taking a trip down memory lane with you guys. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. If we open the top right here, it's a little bent up. We can turn it around. And you can see we have quite the amount of uh, Pokemon cards in here. So let's go ahead and just pull out a stack. There we go. We'll move that out of the way for now. So as you can see, there's quite a few in here. Let's let's just kind of like set them down right there, and then we'll kind of pull them in towards you guys. So the first one we have is an energy card. Let's focus in on that. It says Rainbow Energy. Got a lot of energy cards when I was a kid. I never played the game like a lot of my friends, but we actually just collected them because we thought they looked cool. And uh, we have... Uh, oh no. Okay, let's just grab all of these because we have, you know, quite a surplus of uh, energy cards. We have a fire, electric, another fire, another fire. We have uh, grass type, fire. I think that's rock type. Fighting, Fighting type. Uh, another one. Uh, ghost type, uh, psychic. psychic. Yeah. And we have another two plant types. And then all of these are uh, electric. All right. And now I think we're actually getting into the actual cards. So let's go ahead and just pick this one up. And right here we have Grimer, and it says, a Nasty Goo, flip a coin. If heads, defending Pokemon is now paralyzed. I'm sure the game was actually pretty fun. I just never got around to actually doing it. We have uh, one of the unknown. I remember getting one of these cards, I believe, in one of the Pokemon movies. The third Pokemon movie with Entei. It came with an unknown card, I believe. It's pretty cool. We have Radita. And now we have uh, Dark Kadabra. All right, and now we have a trainer card. I'm not really sure what this is used. All Pokemon powers stop working until the end of your opponent's next turn. Seems kind of like an Uno card. We have Nidoran. We have another unknown. Drowsy. And of course we have uh, more energy cards mixed in here. Here is a Trico. I forget what region this was from. That one's from the Hoenn region. So the Hoenn region. We have Voltorb, Speedball. It's the one I wasn't able to remember the other day, I think. No, that we remembered that one. That's the one we couldn't oh, remember. Oh, it's Electrode we couldn't remember. Here's Electrode. We have Golbat, Wing Attack. Oddish. Another trainer card. Search your deck for a basic energy card. Show it to your opponent and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. And we have a Mareep. Very cute. I think that's from Hoenn as well. No, um, Mareep is Johto. Johto. Pokemon Johto. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Kabuto. Kind of looks like they made a 3D model and just kind of screenshotted it. I never liked the more realistic ones as a kid. They kind of gave yeah. me nightmares. I like the more artistic ones. This one's really cute. Mudkip. I think Mudkip's one of your favorites, yeah? Yeah. He's surrounded by a bunch of lotus. We have uh, Handor. Roar. And Bite. 
And we have a Cacnea. Aram. I remember really trying to find a shiny one of these on Pokemon Go. One of my favorite is Ralts. We have a Seal. Tyrogue. And you know, fighting types are probably my least favorite ones. I don't know why, I just never really cared for the designs. We have a Dugong. We have Curlia, which is the evolved form of Ralts. We have Lantern. Magnemite. This looks like just a screenshot straight from like the show. <laughs> Probably is. We have Wormpole. It's a bug Pokemon. I love Wormpole. She loves bug Pokemon. It's her favorite. But I hate bugs. <laughs> we have Parasect. Another Magnemite, same one. A energy. I don't know which one this is. I think that's steel. Yeah, it's probably steel. We have a Machoke. We have a Growlithe. Amastar. Marina. Weezing. Coughing. Dying. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have a Pelipper. Blaine's Ponyta. We have a uh, Poliwag. Jigglypuff. Slack off. Kind of has like a butt, or is it, it a tail? Looks like a tumor, but that's his butt. Yeah. <laughs> kind of does. We have Swallow. A Trico. Electrike, which I think this is what I mentioned the other day when I thought that Electrode was Electrike or something like that. I know you mentioned it by mistake, but I can't remember at what point. Yeah, me either. We have a uh, Almanite. Nidoran. Nidorina. Nidorina. A Venonette. Nuzleaf. Magnemite. Now He's this one's a bad day. Yeah, this one's kinda like <laughs> I guess uh, maybe it's him doing rollout or something, but he's I, like... I think he's just having a bad day. He's having a bad day. And we have a uh, slack off. He's smelling the flowers. Oh. And metatite? Metatite. Metatite. Magmar. I never really uh, liked Magmar for some when reason. When I was a kid, I always thought he was like a butt head, because his head looks like a butt. <laughs> How does it look like a butt? I don't see it. You don't see it? I his don't head see looks it. like a butt. <laughs> we have a uh, Goldine. Trainer card. 
Oron Berry. Another trainer card, Potion. Energy card. A Leone. Lanoon. Lanoon. I don't know how to pronounce things. I don't know how to read. Yeah. Another Ralts. Different uh, type of card, though. Pretty baby. All right. Now we have something really shiny. It's a Cyndaquil, and I really like Cyndaquil. They evolve into Typhlosion. I'm going to be real. I don't really remember its evolutions that well. I just remember Cyndaquil because it is cute, and that is all little Tori cared about. There we go. Looks like we have another shiny card. This is a Zangoose. Love that rainbow effect. We have... Oh, some shiny in the background. That's actually really nice. Look at that. Delcaddy. You see the stars moving? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Another shiny one. Whalmer. I like the ones that incorporate the shininess, not in just the template, but into the actual photo as well. Have another Ralts. Oh, here's one that I like. It's a Pikachu. I think that one was a movie edition. Yeah? I think. But if you look, when I move the card, you can see the sparkles kind of like going in and out. Kind of like it's animated. I like it. And then we have a Mew card. And I know you got a Mew card, I believe, inside the Pokemon first movie. It's either a Mew card or a Mewtwo card. I'm pretty sure it was a Mew card, though. It was though. a Mew card. I don't know if that's the same one, but I know I had that one. We have a Numel. Because there's Numelus of cards in here. <laughs> I hate you so much. Another Mudkip. A Baltoy. We have a Torchic. You can really tell which generation I liked the most as a child by looking at these. Hoenn? Yeah. We have a Trap Inch. I've always liked how doofy their faces are. Like, look at his soulless cute eyes. <laughs> soulless cute eyes. And here we have a Persian. And that art style looks pretty retro to me. Yeah. Then we have a terrifying looking Diglett. <laughs> Kind of like a 3D model with like an overlay texture. What you never knew is that Diglett's had fur. <laughs> we have a, another Wilmer. I liked the shiny Wilmer more. Zigzagoon. Same lantern card. And now we have a Sharpedo. Because it's a torpedo shark. A Pichu. Magikarp. Horsey. Because it's a seahorse. Shut up. <laughs> Shelter. You know, I've always wondered, is that a beak or a tongue? It's a tongue. Yeah, that just feels odd to me, because halfway through my childhood I thought it was a beak. Huh, that now does that I... not look anything like a beak. I, I know, but... Now that I try to accept the fact that the whole time it's just sticking its tongue out, it's kind of weird. We have a Krabby. Omnite. He's feeling alright. Another Wilmer. Oh, here we go. Cadabra. Growlith. Tangela. Zigzagoon. And the final card, which is a Ponyta. Very nice. So we went through all of these cards. I'm gonna kinda, the stack got kind of a little messy towards the end, but uh, 
I think that it was really nice going through all the cards, and I hope that some of these triggered some really happy memories for you guys, and uh, maybe tell me what your memories of Pokemon cards are in the uh, comments below. But we're going to go ahead and do this in a multi-part series, because we just have way too many to fit on a kind of the 10 minute time span for this video, and I'd rather be able to take more time to go through these a little bit slower and uh, give them more time to kind of shine. But if you have any suggestions or anything, uh, make sure to put them in the comments below because I'd love to hear your opinions and uh, yeah. And today I have something I've really wanted for a while and this is a PlayStation 4 phone clamp or holder. Basically what this is, is it's a little clamp that allows you to put your phone up on top of the controller. We have a PS4 controller right over here, a nice red one. And that's going to allow us to stream games from our PC and then use the controller Bluetoothed to the Android device and allow us to actually use the controller and play games like let's say on the bed or if you're using like Parsec even if you were at work. So, uh, or on a lunch break, I mean. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the packaging real quick. So this is by Adobe. It says Slim and Pro. It says 4P4. Mobile phone clamp for PS4 controller. It says it comes with an OTG line, OTG cable connected. Maximum support for 6-inch mobile phones. Adjust the angle of a range from 0 to 180 degrees. And then just some stuff on the back. Same stuff as the other. And then the bottom is blank. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we can do with it. Let's just remove this real quick. Alright, looks like right here I didn't remove that properly with the razor blade, but that's okay. If we look inside the packaging, we can see the cable peeking out right here. It looks like it's a micro USB. Let's just pull the whole thing out. So it is a micro USB to micro USB. I have a converter, I believe, that can go to USB-C, though. Let's go ahead and take this out. We're not going to really need that since we can Bluetooth, though. And this is what the clip looks like. Here's the bottom hinge right here. And then I'm assuming it just wraps around. Let's go ahead and adjust this first. So this is the little um, thing that's going to actually hold the phone. It probably does something like this. Yeah. Just like that. Now we're just going to grab the PlayStation 4 controller, go in from underneath, and snap it in. Let's see. Might have to lift up, actually. There we go. Not too bad. It actually looks pretty good, too. I'm not going to lie. So, have full range of all the buttons still. Nothing really you know, in an inconvenient spot. Looks as though we have some kind of little plastic thing on here. This is probably a rubber to keep your phone stable, so they probably put this on top. Yeah, that was just some cellophane. Tighten these guys up a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and put my phone on it and see how it looks. All right, I went ahead and opened Moonlight, which is a streaming app that allows you to stream your PC over to your phone. My internet connection's not too great, given the fact that I'm in the garage, but uh, if you can see, I can actually move up and down. Pretty responsive. I'm gonna go ahead and click Continue. And then all of this is happening on my PC right now. As you can see, I can move around now. And it's kind of like turning it into a Nintendo Switch, basically. And the closer you are to the router, the better. I only have like a bar and a half right now out here, and it's still actually working relatively well, surprisingly. But yeah, what do you guys think? I really like this, and I think I'll probably be using it a lot. Um, I could play Final Fantasy on here, Assassin's Creed, uh, pretty much any game that I want with pretty much super low latency when I'm inside the house. Uh, but uh, we're basically just reviewing the clip today, and... Uh, 
it's pretty solid, I'm not gonna lie. It feels good, you can adjust the weight distribution, and it just feels like I'm holding a controller. Really like that. You can even use it to select what game you want. Pretty cool stuff. But yeah. And today we're gonna be looking at the Akaiboshi Yellow Box. Now this is one of the many cookie boxes that I have reviewed from them before. This is actually the mid-tier one. It goes to blue, to purple, to yellow, and then I believe red. And they all uh, kind of go higher quality from there. The other ones having up to, I believe, 56 pieces of uh, cookie in them. But without further ado, let's go ahead and undo the kind of plastic wrapping on the outside right here, these little tabs. There we go. All right, so now all we have to do is lift off the top. Ooh, this one looks like it's gonna be really good. Comes with their little card thing right here. And let's just go ahead and remove this top piece right here. Oh man, this looks really good. Look at all of this assortment of different types of cookies. I spot a white chocolate here, one right here as well. I think this is uh, maybe almonds and white chocolate, I'm not too sure. And then I know one of these is like a green apple white chocolate, which is really interesting. But there's actually, I believe, three in here that I haven't tried yet. So without further ado, let's swap to the other camera and take a closer look at these guys. All right, guys, you know me. The first thing that I'm gonna wanna go for is the white chocolate, cause white chocolate's my favorite. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this guy. Look at this guy right here. Got like a cranberry on the top. You know, I think I might have tried this one before, but I think this one might be slightly different. It looks as though, if we zoom in really close right there, it might have actual peppermint bark on it. Another thing is, is I like my new phone I'm recording with, because as you see in the background, my hand's completely blurred out. It has a really good depth of field, so we can get those finer looks on things. But yeah, let's go ahead and open this up and try it out. Let's give it a, another nice look. Pardon me if my hands are dirty. I've been digging in a barbecue and working on... Uh, clay molds for the last three hours. So they might be a little gross. That looks really nice though. Really, really, really nice kind of, you know, what would you call it? Like a dried, but you know, juicy looking cranberry. Let's go ahead and try this out. Hmm. Yeah, this is really good stuff. Like I'd say, this is top tier quality stuff right here. The crispiness of this wafer and just the creaminess of the chocolate. It's not like a super dried out chocolate. It, it very much has a creaminess and a really good flavor to it. And then whatever these crunchy bits are, just accent it even more. I just glopped right off that cranberry, so I really enjoyed that one right there. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that off. Going back to the box now, the one that we have next to it, if we bring it in and zoom in on it. This is one that I've never tried before, but uh, it says chocolate crunch on it, so I'm assuming that it's kind of wafery. I do see a light layer of chocolate that has a bunch of little crunchies stuck to it. So I'm excited to uh, taste that. Let's go ahead and open it up and try it out. Taking a closer look, you can really see these tiny little wafery kind of crispies on the outside. 
A decent thickness too. Standard wafer on the bottom. Let's go ahead and try it out. The chocolate's really good. You would think that there wouldn't be a lot of like chocolate kind of flavor on it, given the fact that there it seems primarily wafer, but the layer of chocolate that it does have is definitely complementing it and it mixes really well. I still say the other one's my favorite though, but this one's also really good. I'm gonna save the other for my fiance because diabetes. We have this really interesting one right here. Let's pull this up here. I don't even know what the, an almond leaf. That's interesting. I have never had anything that looks like this. Kind of just looks like a, uh, you know, no offense if people eat these, but kind of look like a goopy mess. Kind of like a, maybe look like a sea creature of some sort. But let's stop comparing it to things and take it out of its packaging and try it out. So this is what it looks like. It's got all these kind of cavities in it. I don't know if we can zoom in on that real quick. Let's see how far we can zoom in. I always love seeing that. Look at that. All these kind of like cavities in there. That little piece kind of looks like a face. Let me guys see that right there. Oh, fingers right there. Oh, right there, that little dot. Kind of looks like a little face, like a little dot underscore dot face. Interesting. Yeah, this is really kind of cool. I wonder if it's like a caramel. Let's go ahead and try it out. Mmm. Wow. It's definitely not a caramel. This is an almond kind of taffy, kind of a crunch taffy. In the, in the kind of like a boat of wafer. I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom in on that real quick. It's kind of like a boat of waferness. It's very good though, I really like it. Fortunately, I can't have much more because of my diabetes, but you know, let's move that to the side and it'll be enjoyed later. Another new one that we haven't tried yet is this, let's zoom in on a little farther away. This almond soft cookie, and this one looks really good. I really like the individual kind of packaging. It always makes everything seem so premium. So let's go ahead and open this one. So this is what the cookie looks like has some pitting in it and some light, thinly shaved pieces of almond. Back is flat. A very crispy feeling. It says it's a soft cookie, but we'll see. So it's not a soft cookie as in doughy, it's a soft cookie as in a kind of soft crunch. It's not bad, it's not my favorite. It's kind of plain, and kind of like um, the uh, rolls that are in here. But those are kind of just like uh, meant to have with like a tea or a coffee, I think. Not bad though, definitely interesting. And now we have the infamous white chocolate and almond cookie. Now, this was my first favorite from the blue box, I believe. And it primarily is because it lo just look at the pool of white chocolate in there. Let's go ahead and remove this packaging and show you guys real close up. We zoom in right there. Zoom in on that almond, actually. Look, look at that almond glistening. But look at that. But yeah, that's really nice and thick right there. I really, really like how much white chocolate's on that. Let's go ahead and try it out. Mm. 
Yeah, it's just as I remember it. Really good, really nice uh, wafer cookie. And um, well, I guess it wouldn't be considered wafer. It's more of a, um, what are those cookies called? I'm always having a blank. Shortbread cookies. It's more of a shortbread, a very nice soft shortbread. But look how much chocolate is stuffed in this cookie. That is some really good stuff. Still one of my all-time favorites. And now we come to the, let me zoom in on that, if you guys can read it, the coffee macaroon. And this thing is really good. I've tried this before. Let's open it up and get a better zoom in on it. You know, wipe my hands off a little bit. They're getting all kinds of crumbs on them. There we go. Look at that. There is so much detail in this cookie when you zoom in. There's all kinds of little things on here. Now these little crispy bits, I'm not sure what they are. I think it might be shredded coconut. And then that's what this side looks like. Let's go ahead and break it in half. You're breaking my heart. No. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try it out. I don't remember what it tastes like. Yeah, that's really good. I'm not much for the texture of the coconut. I'm not a coconut fan because of the texture. But um, the coffee flavor in it is impeccable. It's so good. It's It actually tastes like coffee. And then we have these guys right here. Let's go ahead and just pull both of these guys out. These right here, I think one is a burp. This is the green apple. Let's zoom in on it. This is the green apple. And I believe this is the bourbon if I'm not yeah this is the bourbon so let's go ahead and try these out again it has been a while so let's refresh refresh my taste buds with uh, one of these guys kind of a powdery outside probably to seal it let's try it the green apples pretty good I wouldn't say it's my favorite anymore uh, has a little bit of a crunch on the inside. And this guy, I believe this one's just like a solid white chocolate ball with a little bit of uh, bourbon flavoring. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. There we go. Let's go ahead and try this out. You know... It's been a while since I tried those, but I'm going to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of the bourbon one anymore. Green apple one is okay. Maybe I'm getting more critical the more sweets that I try. And this is just a milk roll. I'm not going to indulge in this because it is basically, if I show you right here, the milk roll is just basically the outside of this cookie. It's just standard wafering. There's nothing in it. It's just pure wafer so there's not really anything to explore right there and then this one over here is a tea roll which is about the same thing it has a slight bit of tea-ish flavor to it i believe but it's still very plain and there's not much to really do on that so yeah that was the box and even though i took one of each we still have a little bit more to go i think one more of each in here so this is always probably one of my favorite things to uh, indulge in in these cookie boxes because you get a really large variety all of them feel really premium and honestly where do you really get cookies outside of things like this besides like homemade you know what I mean so I really really enjoy this and not to mention you can keep the 10 after too so that's always a plus reuse your stuff and uh, help the environment a huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Claw machines. You find them everywhere. Your favorite diner, the mall, heck, even the grocery store. 
So let's see what this pint-sized claw machine has to offer and what interesting little tiny things we can put in it and try to win. Let's do this. How's it going guys and welcome back to another JHR review. Today we're going to be looking at the claw. Now this is an as seen on TV. It says hot new electronic arcade game for the home. Now I'm really excited to try this out because what I want to do is I want to take some of my retro Pokemon toys and I want to put them in here and see if we can't pick some of them up and uh, kind of see you know if it will work or not you know be able to pick them up and do it like you do, you know, in like a place with an actual claw machine. So let's go ahead and turn it to the side real quick so we can get a good look at uh, some of the depictions of it. It shows us using some uh, candy right here, like uh, some Hubba Bubble or something like that. It's so much fun. Once you start, you just can't stop. It says you can fill it with any prize, such as candy, gum, or toys. It has multiple knobs on the side that you can also use. It says three joysticks control the claw up, down, left, or right. And then we have kind of a similar depiction on the back. And then another one right here as well. It says that it's going to take some batteries. Right here it says uh, battery compartment. It says that it's going to need D batteries. Install three D batteries as indicated on the diagram below. So I'm going to have to scour for some D batteries first of all, but I do think that I know where some are. So let's go ahead and grab those batteries and then open this guy up and see what it's all about. All right, I got myself some D batteries, so let's go ahead and move those out of the way for now. Now let's go ahead and open this guy up. Hopefully everything's already assembled so I don't have to do anything like that. So, just pull off the top. And there we go. We have the entire thing out of here. Looks as though we have the forwards and backwards, the left and right, and then the up and down. It says it also is supposed to come with some little tiny plastic coins, so let's go ahead and see if we can't find those in the box. Okay, so at the bottom right here, if we turn this down, if we open this up, it actually has the plastic coins in here. We probably could use uh, dimes as well, or maybe nickels. There we go. Now we're just gonna pop off the battery cover and throw in these D batteries. And throw this cover back on. So as you guys remember, I have these Pokemon toys from my last video. Let's go ahead and load these guys up into here and see if we can't pull some of them out with the claw machine. Alright, so I had to cut out a lot of footage. So basically what happened is I had to take the bottom off and disconnect the speaker because it was just so unbelievably loud playing carnival music that I just couldn't record with it and it was just bad. Another thing I had to do is I had to stick my finger in here and separate the claw hinge because the claw itself was stuck together due to the plastic kind of setting into itself. Um, but after I did that it seems to open now. And then I loaded it up with these uh, Pokemon toys, as you probably saw in the previous footage, hopefully. And uh, now we're going to do its first actual test. So let's go ahead and see if we can get something out of this. And uh, yeah, let's do it. I have some plastic coins. I'm going to pop it in. And now let's see if we can get that Growlithe right here. Go down. And up. No. What about some other ones? Let's go ahead and move around. Hey, looks like I got a two for one. Nice. 
Oh, the other one didn't fall. Looks like I just got a Hitmonlee instead. But that's so cool. I can actually pick stuff up. So that's that's actually really nice. So I got a Hitmonlee right here. And uh, it'd be interesting to see like what else we can get inside of this thing. But yeah, I was able to get a Pokemon out of it. And I really think that this is actually pretty unique now that I was able to fix all of the quirks that I kind of had with it. A little bit of annoyance setting it up and whatnot. But now that it is actually up and running, it's pretty fun to mess around with. And it'd be cool if we wanted to, like, you know, put some snacks in there or something. But the only thing is, is getting them out after, since I don't really see a way of removing the top or the side panels. So if you put some candy in there, it might have a bad time if the candy starts to get old and you can't grab it with the cloth. It gets in a bad spot. But, you know, you can always shake it around and then, uh, See if you can't just like pour it and upside down and pour it down into there. So, all right. I think that this was a pretty much a success in the end, but a uh, huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. And today I have some more Japanese erasers from iWago. I'm going to move them out of the way so I don't show you immediately what they are. But we're going to unpack these today and uh, see what we got going on. So the first one that we have right here, if we focus in, is some sea creatures. And I think we've only gotten a whale before. So I'm really excited to uh, take a closer look at these. Let's grab our trusty scissors. There we go. Let's just slide these guys out of here. There we go. Has a nice little kind of uh, background on there too. So the first one I want to look at is this, um, I think this is a manta ray. Let's zoom in on it real quick, get a good focus. So I'm not sure if this is a manta ray or a stingray. It has a really short tail, so I would assume it's not a stingray, but I'm actually not too sure. That's really cool though, I really like the way that it's shaped. It looks like it can swim through water pretty good. Let's go ahead and see how it separates. So, it separates right here into like two pieces. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then it has the eyes in a separate part as well. And then it clamps back together. That's really cute. And the back has a little thing there too. There we go. Um, let me know what it is in the comments below. I'm thinking the mouth and these little thingies on the front make it something different. But I'm not sure if I actually know what it is. But I like that uh, it has the little gills at the bottom and it has the little tiny uh, separation in the eyes. It's kind of cool. And then right here we have a sea turtle, and turtles are my favorite, by the way. Let's turn the light down a little bit. It seems a little overexposed. There we go. Look at the lighting and uh, everything on the shell, how it changes when you move it around. I love turtles so much. I actually have a red-eared slider, and it is a water turtle. This guy separates into two different pieces, along with the peg that goes for the eyes. I can get that back in. And then the little flippers are full of detail and texture as well. The head is pretty detailed too, along with the feet and even the bottom. I really like that one. That's my favorite so far. And then right here we have a whale it might be a sperm whale. I'm not too sure. I do see it has the little kind of mouth thing for taking in plankton, it looks like. It could be a shark, I, but I think it's a whale, though it doesn't have the little thing on the top. I'm not very uh, knowledgeable on sea species, but this one comes out like this, and what's really cool is these pegs go through the top of it, causing it to have that color. And I really like how they do that. I don't know why, it's just super satisfying. Especially when you put it back in 
let me see if I can line it up right. And then, whoop, look at that. And then you just connect everything else back together. And it turns into a whale or a shark or something I don't know about. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And this is a new one completely. Right here, if we focus in on the packaging real quick, we have some dinosaurs. Now, I've never gotten dinosaurs before, surprisingly, but uh, this actually says Dinosaur 2, so I'm assuming there's a first pack. Maybe I have it laying around. I'll have to check my bag. I keep a lot of these erasers, like, in a bag, and I didn't know I had some of these, so I'm really happy I found them. Let's go ahead and cut this guy open with our trusty scissors. There we go. And take these guys out. Ooh, I like that there's a pterodactyl in here. Let's go ahead and uh, pull the pterodactyl up. Get a good zoom on it. Right there, what do you guys think? All right. Yeah, this is really nice. I don't think this one separates, though. Unless the head... Oh, it does. <laughs> um, one thing I just noticed, though, is the head is a different color than the rest of the body. Um... I don't know if that's on purpose, or they just didn't color the head right. Or maybe this is for a different model. I'm not too sure. Details are pretty good, though. We got some nice kind of wing texture, some bone texture. Kind of looks weird when I move it from side to side. Kind of looks like his head's cocking back and forth. And of course, we got uh, the little feet, which, I'm going to be honest, guys, does that not look like just human hands? literally looks like you could put like a human on it and turn it into some kind of like flying like bat demon or something that does not look like a pterodactyl claws <laughs> anyways my imagination so i do like this one um i feel like maybe the eyes come out if you pushed on them but i really don't want to mess this up so let's go ahead and move on and now we have the mighty t-rex and i'm not sure how this guy comes apart his mouth is flexible enough to move which is cool kids would love that it looks as though the legs are what come off and they have two different little um nubs right there to go inside so you could have it uh <laughs> man poor guy pretty much no arms and no legs now uh, so that works you can just put these back on here See if I can actually get it to go in, and there we go. And then the other one on this side. Perfect. I like this one, but I'm still leaning the pterodactyl. Um, but the turtle still my overall favorite. And then we have this guy right here. I'm not sure what kind of dinosaur this is. Let me know in the comments below. I'm hoping his top piece comes off. It feels like it does. It moves and so oh, wow. This is different. Usually the entire dinosaur splits 100% in half, but this one right here, they decided to add the little detail on the top fin-like thing right there, and then press it together. So the seam lines are actually um, on the sides rather than down the center. That's pretty cool. I like that. And going on to a different theme, if we focus in. We have some sushi erasers. And uh, I love myself some food erasers. So let's open this guy up with the trusty scissors. And I've done some sushi erasers before, but I don't know if I've specifically done these. Also, uh, I don't think I showed this before. This is what the uh, packaging looks like on this one. And before on the dinosaurs, it had some bones. Kind of cute. 
Let's take a closer look at these guys. We're going to focus on a little farther out this time. There we go. So these are fish eggs, I believe. And then the inside is probably rice with maybe some veggies or maybe it's just that. It doesn't look like they actually um, put the rice in there. That's kind of disappointing because I don't think that these actually come without any rice in them. I think the center is supposed to be rice because in the outside, I believe uh, sushi is oni onigiri, I think. That'd be kind of hard to chew through, I think. But overall, I think it's pretty cool. Um, this one, erasing from this side would be the best, but I could not imagine erasing with these little tiny balls because you're going to get multiple lines coming out. Maybe it'd be good for doing some kind of abstract art, though. That's what I'm talking about. We have some rice, and I believe this is salmon on the top. We pull that off. You can see that the rice texture on here is really nice. It's all the way around, even on the underside. They did not skimp on that one. We can push it together. It's only a two-parter on this one, but I like that one a lot. And this one you guys are going to have to help me out on because I don't know what this is. It's some kind of uh, topping, but I'm actually not sure what kind of topping it is. I feel like I've tried it before, but I don't remember what it tastes like or what it's called. So let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I'm going to move everything into the center right here. And we went through quite a few this time. We have some nice dinosaurs, some sea creatures, and even uh, some different types of food items. And, you know... Um, these are actually pretty useful, especially for, um, let's say that you are a teacher and you want to maybe get your students who are doing really good a gift, but also make it something functional they can use for class. I think these would be something really cool that you could do something like that with. But yeah, all of these are really nice and I'm really happy that I was able to uh, acquire them. A huge shout out to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your support. You guys are awesome. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and maybe that notification bell as well. Feel free to check out my Patreon in the description below. I have a multitude of tiers that you can help support the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.